Welcome back to Sissy Spaces. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Today's video is full of spring cleaning motivation as I deep clean, clean and tidy several rooms of my home. On my list of things to do today is to deep clean my bedroom and bathroom, clean the kitchen and family room, and tidy my walk-in closet. I've also included some daily laundry motivation and I'm excited to announce I finally checked one more item off my to-do list. Also in today's video, I'm answering some of your cleaning questions because I've answered most of those questions before, but it was directly to the person who asked it. So I figured by sharing it in the video, everyone will receive those cleaning tips versus a select few. So if you enjoyed this type of content, continue watching. And if you're new to my channel, at the end of the video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed, you know that hitting that like button, as well as watching the entire video, really supports my channel. Also leave a comment. I would love to hear from you and I always respond. First question, which is not a cleaning question, but a good one nevertheless, is from Deborah. She asked, why don't I have thousands of more subs? And I responded, I really don't know. I think it has to do with likes, comments, and watching the entire video. Other than that, again, I really don't know. So if any of you know, please share it with me. I do plan to return to my bedroom to deep clean it, but first I want to tidy the family room and load the dishes from this morning's breakfast in the dishwasher. I mistakenly placed this throw in the basket instead of taking it in the laundry room because I need to wash it. Later I did remember and placed it in the washer. arrived in the kitchen, I realized one of the boys had already cleared the dishes from the sink and loaded them in the dishwasher. So all I need to do is rearrange a few items in the dishwasher and clean the sink. I've received a lot of questions about loading the dishwasher, but the biggest one is why I wash my dishes before placing them in the dishwasher. And again, my response is, it saves me time and money. Remember, your dishwasher is like a robot. It has a timer, a sensor, and small jets which does most of the work of cleaning your dishes. The timer regulates the length of each cycle and the sensor on my dishwasher can detect the dirtiest of the water coming off the dishes. When the water is clear enough, the dishwasher knows the dishes are clean. If you rinse or wash your dishes before loading them in the dishwasher, this lessens the time your dishwasher will run, saving you time and money because it's using less water and electricity and you don't need to maintain it or repair it as often. Next question, what breed of dog is Max? And he's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, which is a British breed. He's very affectionate and playful, but has one of the loudest barks I've ever heard. Also, his breed have a lot of health issues, but it's the perfect lap dog. I call him my fur baby, and no matter the cons, adopting Max was one of the best decisions I've ever made. finishing up cleaning the sink, I remembered a question I received months ago from someone who was trying to decide if she should install a stainless steel sink or a white farmhouse sink. I've had both. As a matter of fact, I replaced the white farmhouse sink that was originally in this kitchen with this stainless steel sink. In my opinion, the white farmhouse sink took up a lot of space. It was tricky to keep clean and my dishes would break more easily because of the deep basin. So I replaced it with this stainless steel sink because it's more durable, easy to clean, not as pricey as a farmhouse sink, and is suitable for most kitchen styles and colors. As you just saw, I placed a felt pad on the bottom of the travertine bowl I purchased from Home Goods two weeks ago because it scratched my eat-in table every time it was moved. Yep, I added it to my to-do list two weeks ago and I'm just getting around to completing it. I realized over the years that you will always have a to-do list. And unless it's harming you or your family or costing you a lot of time and money, it can wait. There are more important things that take priority. So again, some things on your to-do list can wait. Our kitchen eat-in area is one of the most highly used areas in our home. So of course I spend a lot of time keeping it clean. Along with sweeping under the table every day, I also like cleaning and polishing the table itself. 
A friend recommended that I use the Method brand of wood cleaner on this table, and I recently tried it, but quickly switched back to Pledge. The Method brand of wood cleaner does clean the table, but it didn't polish it. You would need to purchase the separate brand of Method polisher for that. I switched back to Pledge because it cleans and polishes all at once, and it's more budget friendly. Until Method comes out with a product that cleans and polishes all at once, and it's more budget friendly, I'm sticking with Pledge. Another question was, why do I use a broom and Swifter dry sweeping mop when I have the Dyson V15 vacuum? In my opinion, each serves a different purpose and does a better job in some areas than others. For example, I use a broom by the back door to sweep because I remove the dirt and debris quicker and more easily on the moldings versus taking time to change out the cleaning tools on the vacuum. I also like using the Swifter dry sweeping mop because it's quieter, doesn't require any cleaning when done, and it's a lighter tool to move around in tight spaces. Now don't get me wrong, I do love my Dyson V15 vacuum because it's a better tool to use to clean the carpets and it's great at picking up larger pieces of debris than the Swifter dry sweeping mop. Another question I don't mind sharing is why I chose the sofa I currently have. Well, hubby and I have had four sofas our entire 32 years of marriage, and each sofa was chosen based on our budget at that time, material, color, flexibility, and comfort. Our first sofa was a futon because we couldn't afford very much and needed a second bed for guests. It served its purpose, but after eight years and having our first son, we chose a faux leather sectional. We needed the extra seating for family and friends, and I wanted something I could easily maintain as I was a full-time working mom and college student. Six years later, we traded up to a linen sectional with a sofa bed, but the frame was cheaply made and due to budget constraints, we held on to it for 10 long, painful years. Until eight years ago when we purchased the sofa that we currently have. I had this sofa custom made because I took into consideration the size, something that would ground this room, color, so I didn't need to clean it as often, comfort and flexibility to grow with hubby and I as we age, and frame because a sofa with a durable frame, suspension, cushioning, and upholstery can last 10 to 20 years. So far, we're very happy with our choice and have no regrets. Whenever I pull out these Clorox wipes to clean this sofa, I get the same question. Are non-bleach Clorox wipes safe to use on fabric sofas? Before you spring clean your sofa this year, check the care tag to see what cleaning method and products are safe to use on the fabric. The upholstery furniture industry uses four codes which tell you how to properly clean a fabric couch. For example, if you see a W on the care tag, it means water-based cleaners are the best to use. WS means either water or solvent-based cleaners are safe. S means only solvent-based cleaning chemicals are safe to use. And X means do nothing more than vacuum or brush the fabric. So again, when spring cleaning your fabric on your sofa, check the care tag and follow the instructions. Also, when cleaning your sofa, remember to clean your throw pillows. I wash the pillow covers at least once per month and pillow inserts every other month. In between those times to get rid of dirt and dust, I vacuum both sides of the pillow. But you can also toss them in the dryer on the non-heat or air-only cycle for 20 minutes. By the way, if you have feather down inserts as I do, choose a low setting laundry detergent when washing to avoid soap residue and to avoid having the feathers clumped together. And make it a point to use less detergent than you normally would and set your washing machine to the delicate cycle to take care of the feathered filling. To maintain my leather furniture, jackets, or shoes, I found the Wyman's leather products work best. I prefer to use the wipes versus the spray because I can control the amount of product used, you're not inhaling the mist from the spray, and the wipes always have the right ratio of cleaner that's been researched and tested by experts.
by the way, I'm not deep cleaning the family room today because I did that two weeks ago. My goal today is to clean those highly used areas like the couch, leather chair, and rugs. Whether cleaning or spring cleaning, I hit these areas as often as possible. And by doing so, I prevent wear and tear and extend the life of these pieces. A fellow creator suggested I save the vacuuming for last because most viewers speed past it when watching. But you know what? Whenever I clean a room, I try to finish it before moving on to another room. And I consider a room finished once the floors are clean. Also, by the time I finish cleaning all the areas on my to-do list, I forget to go back to that room to vacuum it. Or I'm just too tired to do anything else. Along with cleaning your home, you should also maintain your cleaning tools. For example, it's recommended that you clean the bristles and brushes of your vacuum after each use, empty the canister after every few uses, although I do this after each use, clean the filters once per month, and give it a deep clean every 12 to 18 months. Eight months ago, I deep cleaned my Dyson vacuum and filmed the entire process. If you missed it, check out my cleaning motivation video and it also includes an easy recipe. In my opinion, one of the most neglected items in your home are lamps and light switches. I clean the lamps and light bulbs throughout my home once per month, but I am bad at cleaning the light switches. After watching this back, I walked around and cleaned my light switches and doorknobs, another neglected item, and I should have filmed it because when I was finished, the microfiber cloth was filthy. As you can see, I'm walking around and dusting all the surfaces first before using my cleaning products. Studies have shown that dusting is essential as it improves air quality and reduces allergens in your home. There is an argument out there though that says damp dusting is just as effective as dry dusting. But in my experience, whenever I damp dust it, I would need to wipe it over and over again to remove the wet dirt particles left behind. I absolutely love the TV art of the Magnolia Sims. I do regret returning the Magnolia Sims I ordered two weeks ago from Michaels, but I just couldn't get it to work in my home. So I was very happy to find this TV art on YouTube that I could display as I clean. Later, you'll also see some more TV art from YouTube, and this time, it included jazz music. I had no intentions of cleaning moldings today because I cleaned all the moldings within our home in January, but once I started, I couldn't stop. Also, I was happy to see that I'm doing a good job of keeping our room dust-free because the Swifter duster was not very dirty at all. Before wiping down the surfaces within our room, I decided to put a load of wipes in the washer. This was also right after I grabbed the throw from the basket in the family room. I was asked, how do I keep my whites looking white without using bleach? And I think it's based on a couple of things. For example, starting with a clean washer tub is my first suggestion, as well as pre-treating stains. And I use Shout stain remover for that. Also use a fourth of a cup of game powder detergent a fourth of a cup of Game Moonlight Scented Breeze, Borax as a whitener and deodorizer, and I also place white distilled vinegar in my fabric softener and bleach tray. This combination of products I've found works best when cleaning whites. The weather in Atlanta was absolutely gorgeous on this day, so I couldn't wait to open these windows. But by doing so, it caused me to do a lot more work. I hadn't planned to clean the blinds or window casings, but once I saw the dirt and grime, I couldn't help myself. As I cleaned, Max took in the view and barked at everything that moved in the backyard. By the way, windows are still on my April to-do list, and I think I found a great budget-friendly tool to assist me in completing this task.
Our bedroom doesn't collect as much dust as my youngest son's room, so wiping down these surfaces will not take long at all. By the way, if you watched last week's video, you know I'm looking for an air purifier for his room. I found one I like at Lowe's, but I'm waiting for it to go on sale. Hopefully it's soon because allergy season is approaching quickly. I was asked, was spray away glass cleaner worth the price? In my opinion, it's a better product than any other glass cleaner on the market. Yes, you can use a damp microfiber cloth to clean your glass, but removing the streaks is a lot of work. So again, spray away glass cleaner, in my opinion, is worth every penny. If you haven't noticed, I'm using the darker microfiber cloth to clean the wood surfaces and a lighter one to clean the glass. I am aware there are multi-purpose cleaners out there that can do both, but again, I prefer spray away glass cleaner on my glass and pledge on my wood surfaces. Mimi asks, what is the most difficult part of having a YouTube channel? And I responded, editing and voiceovers. Earlier in my YouTube journey, I refused to add voiceovers because of my broken English. You see, 13 years ago, I had a stroke, which caused vision, memory, and speech impairment. Till this day, I still need to write things down to remember them, and at times, you may have noticed my slow, impaired speech. I really appreciate those who notice and politely ask, as it's taken a lot of courage to do these voiceovers on a consistent basis. So again, thanks. Now that all my surfaces are clean, I can return my decor books and Joshua vase to this fireplace. I absolutely love decorating my home, and I'm looking forward to summer when I can decorate it again. Also, check out the spring art I found on YouTube. This one, unlike the last one, also has jazz music and shows a different spring art piece every 10 seconds. Kayla asks, how do you keep your cabinet so organized? In my last video, I explained that I organize in a clutter every time I open a cabinet or a drawer. Recently, I noticed that I also do it when I open the fridge. The easiest way to get started is to remove what you haven't used. In other words, to clutter at least one item at a time and then organize that space. If you organize the space after you declutter it, you're more likely to keep it that way. Also, I stick with the same products. And if I want to change a product, I use up the old one first before replacing it with a new one. Carrie commented that she learns something new every time she watches. That comment made me smile. You see, when I started this channel, cleaning motivation was my goal. But friends and family members pressed me to provide cleaning tips because they said those tips were very helpful. So to those family, friends, and to you, thanks. It's nice to know this channel not only provides cleaning motivation, but also cleaning tips that work. Several of you thanked me for the idea of placing used grocery shopping bags into used tissue boxes. I once had the wall trash bag holders on the inside of my doors, but that was when we lived in Alabama over 14 years ago. When we sold the house, I mistakenly left them on the doors and couldn't find them anywhere when we moved to Georgia. So I started using used tissue boxes and have kept using them ever since. Cleaning these window casings were not on my list of things to do today, but they were filthy. After using the Swifter duster to break up the grind, I'm using a Dyson vacuum to remove any remaining debris. I wasn't able to remove all the debris with just the vacuum, so I followed it up with my Rubbermaid scrubber. Although not shown here, the Rubbermaid scrubber allowed me to get into those corners. I then followed it up with the vacuum again before using the damp paper towel to wipe it clean. After vacuuming and replacing these side chairs, I also vacuumed the ottoman. I realized while vacuuming this ottoman that I need to order a fabric shaver because the fuzz and peels were out of control. 
A family member suggested the Conair Fabric Shaver and Lint Remover, so I ordered it off Amazon for $9.99, which was on sale for a limited time. Before tidying the walk-in closet, I want to place our whites in the dryer, and I'm using one Gainlight Moonlight Scented Breeze dryer sheet. I use the same scent for all my laundry products, the detergent, firework beads, and dryer sheet. By doing this, the scents are not competing with each other, which means your laundry will retain the scent for days to come. Today I want to remove as much dirt and dust as possible from this closet. I deep clean it twice a year by removing everything from it, dusting and then wiping out all the shelves with pledge, vacuuming and mopping. Once a year I also declutter any items I haven't worn in a few years and organize the space. By doing this my closet remains tidy, clutter free and organized at all times. I was asked if I clean every day and the answer is no, but I do tidy and organize every day. As I said before, whenever I open something, a drawer or cabinet, I tidy and organize it and on occasion may declutter it by removing an item and disposing of it. This is a habit that I've required over time and it can become a habit for you as well. Studies have shown that some people are able to form a habit in less than one month and others may need up to three to six months. Again, it takes time, but the key is to get started. As I was cleaning the bottom two shelves, I was trying real hard to give you guys a better view of the dust and dirt that was falling off these shelves. But after re-watching this, I noticed my 4C hair had occupied most of the space. I just hope you guys were able to see something. Sometimes creating these videos is a struggle, but I'm going to continue doing it because it's also fun. I would usually wipe this mirror down with the sprayaway glass cleaner, but after dusting it, it wasn't needed. As my mom always says, dust things first or just use water before pulling out the cleaning supplies. Because sometimes dusting or just using water is all you need. And again, she would know because she was a housekeeper and cleaned hotels for a living for over 30 years. After disposing of this sweeping cloth, we're going to deep clean the bathroom. I was asked what are my favorite products to use when deep cleaning the bathroom. And if you've been with my channel for a while, you've seen me use the same products over and over again. And I do this because they work. Also, if you've read any of Faith's comments, she lists them as hashtags. By the way, the products I use all the time to clean all four of my bathrooms are Swifter Duster, Microfiber Cloth, Spray Away Gloss Cleaner, my vinegar mixture, which consists of white dissolved vinegar, Dawn and water, Rubbermaid scrubber, Scotch Bright sponge, and Clorox wipes. I usually don't spray the vanity down with my vinegar mixture, but I trimmed my hair last night, which left hair and oil all over the place. I used the vinegar mixture to remove as much hair and oil as possible, and then followed up with Clorox wipes. I'm also going to clean the cabinet doors and drawers as well because again, oil splattered everywhere. I think I mentioned this in last week's video, but I removed the sink drain stopper a few weeks ago to unclog the sink and decided to leave the stopper off. It was and continues to be one of the best decisions I've ever made. I now have access to the stopper and drain and can deep clean it as often as possible. By the way, if your pop-up mechanism has lost some of its pop, it's time to give that mechanism a good scrubbing. And that nasty black stuff that you may see in your drain is made of mostly hair, soap scum, toothpaste, skin cells, shaving cream, and possibly mold. So cleaning your pop-up strainer will keep it popping and reduce the chance of odor coming from your sink. I'm also trying to get better at linking the products I use in my description box. 
but I've found some links are not always available, and YouTube has flagged me in the past on some links as well. If you don't see a link to a product in the description box, leave a comment and I will always provide you with as much information as possible. A family member asks, how do you keep the jets clean in your jetted tub? If you've been with my channel for a while, you know this family does not use tubs, but showers instead. So monthly, I dust the tubs in our home and wipe them down with Clorox wipes. At least twice a year, I place Dawn dish detergent, vinegar, and sometimes borax in the tub with hot water and run the jets for at least 20 minutes. In last week's video, I failed to give you a before of the shower well, I remember it today, so here's the before, and when I'm done cleaning, I'll give you the after. Melanie asks, where do I get the cleaning parts of the drill? The hard 20 volt cordless drill and blue scrubbing brushes are from Walmart, and the yellow scrubbing brushes are from Amazon and are specifically designed to clean the bathroom. I was on Amazon searching for the Conair fabric shaver that I mentioned earlier and noticed these scrubbing brushes now come in a four-piece set for $4.99 versus the two-piece set I purchased at a much higher price. Before cleaning the shower doors, I decided to clean my husband's side of the bathroom first because my arms are always so tired after scrubbing the shower door. By the way, I still have in the plans to remodel this bathroom. I hired a contractor over the holidays, but he's having a problem with his tile guy, so I'm on the hunt for a new contractor. I will keep you abreast of the progress and will definitely take you along once the project begins. suggested that I use a squeegee to clean these shower doors and I had one for each bathroom but forget to pull them out after scrubbing the doors. You see to clean these shower doors first I spray them down with the vinegar mixture then I use the yellow side of a scotch bright sponge to wipe them down. After that I follow up with a microfiber cloth. I guess I'm just so used to using the microfiber cloth I forget to pull out the squeegee. Once I start cleaning the windows using the squeegee next month I'm hoping it'll remind me to use the squeegee on the shower doors. By the way, do you have any plans for this week? I want to look for new linens for my bedroom as well as a bed frame. It's very difficult to find an upholstered wing back bed frame that will fit my king adjustable bed. I have found several, but they're either not the right color or are not made for adjustable beds. If you have any suggestions, please share them. Deborah asked, how should she clean the sprayers on her kitchen sink? She said they probably have hard water buildup where the water comes out. I suggest that she soak the parts in white distilled vinegar, scrub with an old toothbrush, and rinse well. I usually have this problem with the sprayers and the showers, and white distilled vinegar works every time. After we're done wiping down these shower products and returning them to the shower, I'm going to give you an after of this shower. It is so clean and smells wonderful. I've said this before, but I didn't realize how dirty this shower was until I cleaned it.
Now that the shower doors are clean, but before cleaning the toilet, I want to wipe down these vanity drawers and doors. Earlier in my YouTube journey, I failed to wipe the vanity drawers and doors down and was embarrassed when a viewer pointed it out to me. And she was right. They were dirty. Because these doors are dark, they show every fingerprint and stain very well on camera. So I try to remember to wipe them down every time I clean this bathroom. Diane asks, where do I find these toothpaste tube holders? And they're from Amazon. They're called the mini ceramic toothbrush holder stand and comes in a pack of two for $6.98. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to link them, but they're still on Amazon. I'm now in the toilet room and want to wipe down this artwork that I hung above the toilet as well as the window and magazine holder before cleaning the toilet. This home was built in 2002 so I'm not sure if they still build magazine holders in the wall in the toilet room considering most folks use their phone while on the toilet. Yep, this toilet lid is crooked. The installer stripped the bolts used to hold the lid in place, so it's been like this for years now. By the way, this is not your traditional toilet, as the bolts used to hold the toilet in place are concealed inside the base of the toilet. So they're a pain to remove and replace. If you're new to my channel, my friends call me Charlene, but my family call me Sissy. That's the channel name. I live outside of Atlanta with my husband of 32 years, our two young adult sons, and our fur baby Max. I enjoy creating all cleaning and homemaking videos and give you tips and tricks on how I maintain a clean and tidy home. So if you enjoyed today's video, at the end of the video, please remember to hit that like subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Naomi asks, what are the measurements for the Don and Vinegar Cleaner? So I wanted to include it in today's video. I stopped measuring a long time ago, but it looks to be three-fourths to a half cleaning vinegar, a fourth to a third of water, and a tablespoon of Don dishwashing detergent. At this point, I was thinking of dinner. But hubby said he plans to smoke salmon and saute some kale. And later that evening, it was absolutely delicious. After vacuuming these floors, I need to check on the load of whites I placed in the dryer earlier. Also, I've had several questions about this vacuum. This is the Dyson V15 vacuum with the green laser light detect. It's an investment, but it's worth every penny. And I can't say enough about how great the suction power is. It's easy to use, lightweight, and I've had it for over two years. Mm -hmm. 
Our whites are done, so I'm gonna remove them from the dryer, fold them, and put them away. I like doing this right away because if I don't, they'll sit there and bother me until I do. I also found that if I wash one small load per day, I'm more likely to fold them and put them away on the same day. I mentioned this before, but my favorite household task is folding warm laundry right out of the dryer. It relaxes me and most of the time I fold them without watching TV, especially if I have a lot on my mind. I found that I make better decisions when cleaning and folding laundry, and I think it's because I'm relaxed at that time. I've also mentioned this before, but I fold my laundry on the ironing board in the family room because the counters in the laundry room are too tall and it gets pretty warm in there. I tried once folding them on the couch, but Max wanted to play with them. So the ironing board in the family room works best for my family. the laundry away, I had dinner, which again was smoked salmon and sauteed kale, then used the Swifter wet mop in the bedroom and the steam mop in the bathroom. Whenever hubby smokes salmon again, I'll try to record it for you. That man can cook, and I'm not ashamed to say he has always been the better cook in our family. I'm using the original scented Swifter wet pads versus the lavender scented ones. And most of you agree with me that the original scented ones are better. Don't get me wrong, the lavender scent ones do smell nice, but it's very overpowering, especially after mopping for over five minutes. These floors were not as bad as I thought considering they haven't been mopped in over a month. Once I'm done cleaning the dryer, I'm going to steam mop our bathroom floors. And unlike our bedroom floors, the bathroom floors were filthy. I'm using the Bissell steam mop I purchased from Walmart over a year ago. It's easy to use, but not as lightweight as described. It has a swivel head that allows it to fit in smaller spaces and it's not cumbersome to store away. The water tank is small, but holds enough water for me to clean my entire bathroom floor without refilling it. As you can see, I also like using it on the tile floor within the shower, but no longer use it on my laminate floors because I couldn't control how much water was left behind. This steam mop also has a 25 foot cord and an easy flip down scrubber that you can use to clean your grout lines. I don't use this steam mop very often, but when I do, I am satisfied. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like, subscribe button, and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.